Ba-bam! What's going on? Welcome back to this hobby of ours. I am uh, back home on a great trip in LA and wanted to do a follow-up on Strap Gap. Thank you, Tudor. Thank you for that fabulous Strap Gap uh, on this otherwise beautiful Tudor Heritage Chronograph. Going to talk about that today, so let's get into it. Oh, watch out, squirrel. Just uh, driving around, talking some watches today. And I've been wanting to talk about this Tudor for a little while. It's a pretty neat chronograph. It's using a ETA movement. I think it's a 2893. Whereas a lot of chronographs, you know, in the mid ranges, uh, even some of the upper ranges are using the Valjoux 7750. And the unique thing about this is, well, obviously it's a tribute, it's in the heritage line, so it's a tribute to one of Tudor's former watches, the early 70s uh, Monte Carlo. Really good looking watch. Uh, and wow, over 18, 20 grand now. Uh, those watches are beautiful. That had a manual wind uh, movement. I have to look up which that one is. I, I think it's a, I think it's a Valjoux. So I imagine that watch wears a little bit better than this one. This one is just as about as big as the big blocks. Heavy Chevy, stands proud. Oh, hello. There's people cutting me off in traffic today. My goodness. Talking watches, people. Watch y'all driving. I guess I better watch my driving. And I. I like it when a chronograph sits a little more flush. I mean, there are some manufacturers like Zinn that can execute a Valjoux 7750 pretty, pretty low on the wrist, whereas some are just thick as a brick for some reason. I don't know why that is. But this one still wears pretty decent on my wrist. Now, the strap gap is prodigious. And I, I think it all has to do with where they've drilled. Obviously, it, it has to deal with where they drilled the holes for the spring bar. They could have choked it up a bit on the lug and still done just as well with the uh, end link attachment of the bracelet, I think. But a great watch. I want to talk about Steinhardt. And, you know, saying that a Steinhardt could be better than a Tudor is kind of preposterous. But... Steinhardt's race timer, which is clearly uh, taken inspirationally from this, although they executed it a little bit differently, uh, they flipped the colors. I owned that watch and I loved it. It was just too big. It was it was lug to lug, too far, way too thick. Just you know, it's a watch for a man's man with a manly wrist. Uh, I owned it twice, sold it both times, because as much as I love the design aesthetic, I couldn't wear it. It was just too large. And I really wish Steinhardt, they stopped making them. Uh, I wish Steinhardt would reintroduce that with a manual line movement, Valjoux 7760, in a 40 millimeter case. Uh, the Hanhart reissues use that movement. And those sit very well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write the Germans over at Steinhardt, see if I can inspire them to do that, because that would be my everyday watch. I love that color scheme so much. And the, the Tudor rendering of the color is kind of bright, whereas the Steinhardt was a little more subdued, a little more matte. And actually the Steinhardt was made in titanium. So even though it was a big hockey puck on the wrist, it wore relatively very light, even on bracelet. That was a... Even when Tudor does titanium bracelets, the clasp is made of steel. See the Pelagos. Uh, but the, the Steinhardt was completely titanium. And uh, sacrilege or not, the strap that I've got on this Tudor is in fact the blue and orange stitch strap from one of the Steinharts I owned. I ended up getting the strap and ended up, I sold the, the watch on its bracelet. I periodically, periodically try to find that watch again and buy it back. It's a bit of foolishness, especially since, you know, they stopped making it. It's like 900 a grand. I 
think when it was new and so it's going to shoot up over that the last time i bought it got it for an absurdly low price i want to say 400 bucks i, I used some e-bucks that's why i can't remember i think it was maybe five and something but a boatload of e-bucks at the time on ebay and just got it at a song i should have kept it but i couldn't wear it so if you're not going to wear your watch the watch get rid of it get something else but if they introduced that in a 40 millimeter variant, thinner manual wind, I would be all about that watch. All about that watch. Love that color scheme. And when you put these two next to each other, they're different, but obviously very, very similar. And that's kind of Steinhardt's game. Um, they make a high quality product but let's put some let's let's put some money into the design team, shall we, Steinhardt? Let's maybe do that. Yeah, this watch is cool, but that strap gap, like G Money said. But if you clock it just a little bit, gap. Yeah. It's epic. It's probably about a quarter inch. Just looking at it, I'm gonna zoom in on it. Let's do a close up of this watch and take a better look at it. Tudor Heritage Chrono Blue. Uh, sure does sparkle, doesn't it? It's the bracelet for, uh, you know, illustrative purposes. Got it on the strap right now. It is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It is beautiful. Look at that gap, will ya? Look at it. Twenty-two millimeters across. Let's have us a look on the wrist. I don't know, six and a half inches. I can pull it off, but just barely, right? Just barely. Love it. I <laughs> really love it for here. A uh, little bit less from there. Maybe I'll pop it back on the bracelet. Beautiful, though. Just beautiful. Well, there you have it. Tudor Heritage Chrono Steinhardt Race Timer. Little mini comparison. And, you know, wear the watch that fits you. Wear the watch you like. No matter what it cost you or who made it, enjoy yourself. And we will catch you on the next one. All right, have a good one. Just to show how compatible this Tudor and Steinhardt. Look at that beautiful strap. Ba-bam.